Hey students, welcome to lecture number 12 of multiple zeta values and modular forms. So today and next time we want to talk about period polynomials of modular forms and to the connection of these polynomials to our formal double zeta space. So here in this picture we want to understand the relationship between our formal double zeta space and these polynomials which we will define today. And we will see that there will be a subspace of this formal double zeta space uh, which will be isomorphic to the space of modular forms and the isomorphism will be given by these um, combinatorial uh, Eisenstein realizations which we introduced last time. And then next next time we will start with the last section where we talk about uh, multiple Eisenstein series. But first uh, let's recall um, some um, notations. So the formal double zeta space was defined like this. So we denoted it by dk and this was a, the q vector space spanned by these formal symbols. And then we divided out uh, these relations which came from the double shuffle relations, so the stuffed product here and the shuffle product uh, here. And using these um, families of relations we proved several results on the space of this double zeta, uh, formal double zeta space. So for example in odd weight we proved uh, last time, I think the time before, the parity result stating that if the k is odd then all of these double z's uh, can be written in terms of these p's and these single z's and this is uh, usually denoted by uh, called the parity. So for the, if we apply the zeta realization this means that every double zeta value in odd weight can be written as a polynomial in, in Riemann zeta values. And then we also saw by using this theorem that the dimension in odd weight is given by uh, k plus one half and we can write down two explicit bases uh, for the space. One is given by as uh, a single z's and the p's which is following from the theorem but we were also able to invert this equation here to get uh, this basis. And then last time we proved a similar result for the even weight case. So there we already knew that we also had this um, family of relations here between these p's and these single z's. So for example one consequence was that uh, the sum of all these uh, p even even is a multiple of, of this zk. And then we also improved by using this, um, this, this pairing um, that the in even weight the dimension is k half and that these z odd odds um, span or are a basis of the space dk in odd weight. And in particular um, this means that double zeta values in even weight uh, can always be written as a linear combination of zeta odd odds uh, but we saw that there are relations among zeta odd odds uh, for the real multiple zeta values which is not the case in this formal space here. And today we want to give another explanation um, for these relations among zeta odd odds um, using period polynomials. But first uh, let's also recall um, what we meant by uh, realizations for all k. So in the first lecture on formal double zeta, um, on the formal double zeta space we fixed the weight k and then set an homomorphism from dk to some vector space a is called the realization of dk in a. And then last time we extended this notation and now considered a q-algebra a and considered families of realizations and then we said a family of realization for each weight k is then called the realization of d in some q-algebra a. And for this um, we had two main examples. So one was given by this uh, zeta realization where the zk so we will denote it by uh, phi zeta and for the zk this map just sends um, the zk to the Riemann zeta value or the shuffle realized version which just means that if k equals 1 um, we, we set this to be 0 and also um, because uh, the formal double zeta space in weight 2 
and has a special property that 2 equals 0, so, so this equality here just makes sense for k not equal to, and if k equals 2, then the image of phi of z2 is just 0, and the, the image of this double zk is just the double zeta value, or the shuffle regularized version, and this p gets mapped to the products of these single zeta values. And then we had this um, combinatorial Eisenstein realization, which in the def swan object gets mapped to the Eisenstein series, gk, and the def 2 object gets sent to these uh, combinatorial double Eisenstein series, which we introduced last time as a linear combination of these q series small g and these rational numbers uh, beta, so we gave an explicit formula for, for this q series here. So maybe one should say that in this case here, this oh, in this case the a is the real numbers, or the, uh, we could also say it's uh, the space of multiple zeta values, which is inside the, the real numbers, and in this case here, the q algebra we consider is a the q-algebra of um, q-series with rational coefficients. And so um, this Eisenstein realization um, for each weight k, we get a q-series in this q-algebra here, and the piece gets sent to the product of Eisenstein series plus some modification if one of these k is 2, because in these cases we also need to add uh, some derivatives of this Eisenstein series. And then um, one application of this formal double zeta space was that um, for these families of um, realizations for all weight k, uh, we can prove this theorem here, stating that if we have a realization of d in some q-algebra a, and then we denoted this zk to be the, the image of uh, this zk plus um, some element in weight uh, 2, and then um, if the p gets set, sent to the product, for example in the case of the zeta realization, uh, then we can prove this, this Euler formula, and if the product gets sent to uh, the product of these sets plus some correction term with maybe some derivation here on this q-algebra a, um, then we get these Ramanujan differential equations, and also the statement then that every even that is in this ring here, and if this um, product here, if both of them are greater or equal to 4, if the product is given by exactly the product without um, um, extra terms here, then we can see that the, the even that case are in this po um, polynomial ring here. And so this first condition here was satisfied by the, by the zeta realization, so here this was true for this phi zeta, and the other two things here, um, this was true for this uh, combinatorial Eisenstein realization. So in particular, as a consequence, we see that the even Eisenstein series, greater or equal to 4, are in this polynomial ring of generated by G4 and G6, and also that they satisfy um, these differential equations. And um, today, now we want to uh, introduce the period polynomials and then show, well, we'll prove it next time, but not, but we will st um, state the, the theorem today that a certain subspace of this, um, um, of this formal double zeta space, was, which is basically generated by this uh, P, even even, uh, is isomorphic to the space of modular forms. And the isomorphism will be given by, by this map here. And we already see that we can prove a lot of relations which are true for modular forms by this theorem we proved last time. Okay, so what are period polynomials? Well, they are polynomials assigned to modular forms, but here um, we need to make a, a restriction. So we now we don't consider all modular forms, we will just consider uh, cusp forms. So let f be a modular form, a cusp form of weight k. So recall this means that f um, can be written as some uh, q-series which starts at 1 here. So the constant term in this q-series 
uh, vanishes. And then for such a modular form, for, for a cusp form, we can define this element, this thing here. So this is now P of F, so the period polynomial of this cusp form F, which will be a polynomial in these two variables X and Y. And what we do is we take an integral um, from zero to infinity along the imaginary axis. So let's say this is the complex plane here. And what we do, this integral here, we integrate um, from zero to, to I infinity. And we integrate this cusp form F and we multiply it here with this um, polynomial X minus Y tau to the K minus two. And this integral makes sense because this is a cusp form. For a cusp form, we know that um, if we go, um, if we send tau to i infinity, then uh, this vanishes. So tau goes to i infinity of some cusp form. Um, oops, tau. So in general, this gets sent to the constant term, but in this case, um, this is zero. And therefore, we see that here, if tau goes to i infinity, uh, this integral uh, converges. And also because this map S, which sends i, which sends, inverts um, uh, i infinity and zero, um, and using the invariance of this modular form under this, we can see that this integral also makes sense if tau goes to, to zero here. And so this is a, a polynomial of degree k minus two, um, a homogeneous polynomial, and the coefficients are complex numbers. So in general, this will be an element in C tensor VK, where VK is, um, recall, VK is uh, the polynomials with rational coefficients in X and Y, homogeneous of degree K minus two. And um, because this F um, satisfies certain functional equations, and, I mean, the definition of a modular form is it's a holomorphic function in the upper half plane satisfying certain uh, transformation properties. We can show that this um, polynomial um, satisfies the following. So this is the statement of this lemma here. So if you have a cusp form F and some element gamma in SL2Z, then the action of this gamma, so recall this action here is now the usual action on this VK. Uh, so let me, oops. So recall this is uh, how we define this action of some matrix on a polynomial. If this matrix is A, B, C, D, then we just make this change of variables here. So this we do here on the left hand side to this polynomial here. And then the statement is that uh, this integral doesn't really change except for the for the bounds here, where we just uh, uh, take the action of this gamma by this Möbius transformation of zero and i infinity. And this is part of the exercises and this follows directly by the fact that f is a modular form. And this has some consequences for these polynomials that they also satisfy uh, certain functional equations under this under this group action. So for example, if we let the element one plus S, so here one plus S, it's not the sum of two matrices. Uh, maybe, where is it? So recall, these are the matrix S and this is the matrix U. And by one plus S, we, this plus uh, is not the sum of the two matrices, it's an uh, we view it here as an element in the group ring um, Z, SL to Z. Um, so this means we let the identity matrix act on PF and this matrix S, and then we sum up these two polynomials. And using this lemma here, we see where well, this identity is just this integral. And if we apply S, then uh, S inverse of zero goes to I infinity and S inverse of I infinity goes to zero. So the, the order of this integration changes. And therefore we see we have the same integral here, but uh, with the reversed order and therefore we get a zero. 
So therefore this period polynomial vanishes under the action of 1 plus s. And similar, using also this lemma here, one can show that uh, the period polynomial of a cusp form also vanishes under the action of 1 plus u uh, plus u squared. And this is also part of the exercises. So we see we have these uh, two equations and therefore this motivates us to define now a subspace of this vk which are those polynomials which vanish exactly under these two actions. And this is usually denoted by wk. So wk is the intersection of the kernel of the action of 1 plus s and the action of 1 plus u plus u squared. So in particular these period polynomials they are elements in C tensor W K. But it could be that maybe these period polynomials um, satisfy more relations but as we will see in a second um, um, this is exactly the only relation satisfied by these period polynomials and this we will make precise uh, in, in, in once in a few yeah, in a few seconds. But first um, we want to consider certain subsets uh, of this WK. Um, so uh, for this recall we had these elements so let me put this here. So we had this element epsilon which was given by this and now um, by V plus minus we denote the plus minus um, one eigenspace of this epsilon and this just means well this epsilon just changes x and y and the plus one eigenspace just means that um, changing x and y doesn't change the polynomial and this means that this polynomial is symmetric. So in other words this v plus are the symmetric polynomials. In other words those polynomials which satisfy, uh, well, that they are symmetric, that changing x and y doesn't change anything, and v minus are the anti-symmetric polynomials. So meaning, meaning if I change x and y, then I get a minus sign. And then we also had this element small delta, which was given by minus one, uh, one, and uh, this uh, we also want to consider the, the eigenspaces of this uh, action, the plus and minus one eigenspace, and these we will denote by v even and v odd, and these are also the plus minus one eigenspaces uh, of delta. And maybe I should have said at the beginning, from now on k is always even. So in this case um, this condition here um, being a plus or minus one uh, eigenvector of this uh, action here just means that this is an even polynomial meaning all monomials are even or it's an odd polynomial. So that's why this notation even and odd. And similar we will then define um, this w uh, bullet uh, which will be oh, WK. So this bullet could either be plus, minus, even, odd, and so on. And by this we just mean we consider the um, the part of this W in this VK um, bullet. So WK plus means these are those polynomials vanishing under this operator here, which are symmetric. Wk minus would be mean would mean that these vanish under this operator and they are anti-symmetric and even means they are even polynomials and odd means they are odd polynomials. And then the statement is that for these um, Wk, so these uh, polynomials vanishing under these two operators, we have the following statement that the um, plus part, meaning the symmetric part, is exactly the same as the odd part. So if I have a polynomial which vanishes under these, under these two 
actions here and it, it's symmetric, then it's automatically uh, odd and the other way around. And also anti-symmetric in this case just means that it's even. Of course, this is not true for the whole space VK. It's just true for this subspace here. And also, instead of um, having these two conditions, vanishing under 1 plus s and 1 plus u plus u squared, one can show that one just needs one condition. And so the statement is that this wk um, is the kernel of this action 1 minus t minus t prime, where t prime is this matrix here. So in other words, it's just, so recall t is this matrix, 1, 1, 0, 1. And t prime is just a transpose of this matrix here. And also the subspace is the plus and minus space. Um, one can write using this one single equation. This is uh, the, the kernel of 1 minus t minus plus t epsilon. So for wk plus, this is, or for, let's say for wk minus, this is the kernel of 1 minus t plus t epsilon. So these are just other descriptions, or easier to use descriptions for these spaces, uh, w, k, plus and minus. And um, this space, um, we will also call the space of peer polynomials, uh, even though we just know that they are contained in there up to the coefficients. But the statement now of, of the next theorem will be that this space is actually isomorphic to the space of, of cusp forms, if we consider just the plus or minus part. So more precisely, we have the following statement. Oops. So this is due to the work of Eichler and Shimura. So, <clears throat> so the map uh, P plus minus, which sends an F to its even, to its uh, symmetric or anti-symmetric period polynomial, which just means uh, uh, the even or odd period polynomial because symmetric is odd and uh, anti-symmetric is even. This gives an isomorphism from the space. So the, the symmetric um, period polynomials, meaning the, the odd period polynomials, this gives an isomorphism from the space of cusp forms um, to the space here of period polynomials. And the anti-symmetric part meaning the even period polynomials, we get an isomorphism from the space of cusp forms um, to this space here with a, a co-dimension uh, one, where we divide out this one-dimensional space here. So you can check that, that these polynomials, so they are elements in W, K minus. So these simple, for, for, all, for all K greater or equal to four, well, also for two, because then it's just a zero polynomial. But um, so these polynomials satisfy um, this. They are inside the kernel of this map here, which you can check by direct calculation. But the statement is you need to divide out um, this one dimensional space out of this um, space of even period polynomials. But later we will see that there's an extension of this map where we can actually take the space of all modular forms, mk, so later. And then the statement is we will have an isomorphism to C tensor, the whole wk minus. And these guys here will be the period polynomials of the Eisenstein series. Because the only difference between mk and sk are Eisenstein series, and we will see that there's an extended definition, so-called extended period polynomials, which makes sense for all modular forms, and then we will have this isomorphism here. But in the next, we will just, um, today we will just focus on these usual um, period polynomials, and the next time we will talk about these. Okay, so uh, what is now the relationship between these period polynomials and the formal double zeta space? So both of these spaces, the, the symmetric part and the anti-symmetric part, they are both closely related to this formal double zeta space. And more precisely, they will be related to a certain subspace. Or maybe first, 
one example. Uh, I didn't give one single example for a period polynomial. So we just define period polynomials for cusp forms. And for example, the first cusp form, the first non-trivial cusp forms away, uh, appears in weight 12, the Ramanujan delta function. And one can show that uh, um, the odd part, so the, the symmetric part of this cusp of this period polynomial of this cusp form uh, is given by by this polynomial here, where we um, well we the statement is that uh, up to some some complex number c we have this polynomial here, and for the even part we have this polynomial here. And also um, one comment one should make is that um, that for each of these parts, the plus and minus, one can always find um, a basis of these spaces of cusp form such that the image of these basis elements are actually in, in these spaces, uh, meaning that the coefficients are all uh, rational. So we will, in the, in the following, we will focus just on these rational parts here and don't worry about these uh, complex numbers. As you can see here, and for example, in weight 12, one can find a complex number c such that this period polynomial of, of this multiple of the delta function is really given by these uh, rational um, polynomials. Okay, but now to the, to the subspace of the formal double zeta space, which will be related to these period polynomials. So this is given by this space here which we will note by pk eve. And pk eve um, is the space spanned by these elements p. So you should think of um, this is a space spanned by these products. So it's a subspace of dk. So this is a subspace of the formal double zeta space spanned by all p m m, where m and n are even, and the sum of m and n is k. And then by the, let me go back to the statement from the beginning, by this statement here, we see that uh, zk can be written as a sum of these uh, p even even, or in other words, one could say that p 2 k minus 2, um, which is the same as p k minus 2, 2, can always be written in terms of p even even where both entries are greater or equal to 4 and zk. So this means that this space pk even even, we can say it's either spanned by these p m n with m and n greater or equal to 2, or it's spanned by zk and p m n with m and n greater or equal to 4. <coughs> Okay, so what is now the connection of this space to this uh, space of period polynomials, this w, wk plus and minus, and the connection is quite nice. So the statement is that there are two explicit isomorphisms. So one is um, from the space of even period polynomials, or the anti-symmetric period polynomials, to, to this pk even even. So the statement is that this is an isomorphism, and we can write down this isomorphism explicitly. And for this wk plus, so the odd period polynomials, they are isomorphic to the dual space of pk even. So this here would be the, the dual space, space of pk even, so all homomorphisms from pk even to, to q. But um, there's one restriction, it's not the whole um, dual space, it's a again, a co-dimension one subspace, where here we just um, get those homomorphisms such that the image of the ZK is zero. And later, when we talk about extended um, period polynomials, we can get rid of this condition here, and here we will have some extended um, uh, version of period polynomials. And so, what is the consequence of this? So first of all, because the what is the dimension of w k minus? 
Um, well, in the theorem of Eichler-Shimura, we saw that the dimension of W k minus um, is so the dimension of this minus one would be the dimension of the space of cusp forms. And because the space of cusp forms is the space of the, dim the dimension is the dimension of the space of all modular forms minus one, therefore the dimension of this space here is exactly this, the dimension of the space of modular forms. And therefore this is also the dimension of PK if. So one consequence of this would be that we get an isomorphism from this pk eve to the space of modular forms with rational coefficients given by this uh, combinatorial Eisenstein realization. And to see this, um, because we know the dimensions um, are the same, so I mean here this dimension is also the same as uh, the rational part, and we just need to show that this is subjective, but um, if we look at this here, so what is the image of this PK even under this Eisenstein realization? Well, this is exactly the space spent by GK plus, and then we know that the, the image of this PMN, if M and N is greater or equal to four of this Eisenstein realization is exactly the product GMN. And there we already know, due to the result of uh, Kohn and Zagi, that this is a space of all modular forms with rational coefficients. So in other words, we know that the, that the products of Eisenstein series and the single Eisenstein series already span the whole space of modular forms. And therefore this map here is subjective, and because of this it's the same dimension, and therefore this gives an isomorphism. So these combinatorial Eisenstein series are so they give a direct connection of this subspace of the formal double zeta space to the space of modular forms. And, um, and therefore, uh, every relation among modular forms can somehow be proven in this um, setup here, in this formal double zeta space. And one example we already, or a lot of examples we, we saw before by this theorem, where we proved these um, uh, relations here. Where is it? Here, for example, that uh, any modular form is a, is a polynomial in G4 and G6. Okay, so, oh yeah. So now, um, in the rest of this video, I just want to make uh, these two statements more precise, because I said there are two explicit isomorphisms. So starting with the period polynomial in this space, we can write down an explicit element here. And starting with an odd period polynomial here, we can write down an explicit element in the dual space of PK even. And then next time we will prove these two theorems. So let's start um, with the even period polynomials. And for this, so let's start with an even period polynomial P. And then we can make this change of variables so we can so this we could also write is this is a period polynomial P where we let this matrix T act. This is again a polynomial which we can write out. And then um, we could give these coefficients a name, which I will call here beta of this period polynomial P, K1, K2. So these are the coefficients of x to the K1 minus 1 and y to the K2 minus 1. So for each period polynomial P, we get a collection of rational numbers by a really explicit way here. And then the statement is that uh, the map which sends a period polynomial P to a linear combination of these Z odd odds, where the coefficients are exactly given by these betas, the statement is that this is an isomorphism of Q vector spaces. And this um, proves, so this gives this isomorphism here. But um, 
here in this picture it's even not really clear why this is actually an element in this pk even because pk even was given by a uh, linear combination of p even even and here we now send this to a linear combination of z odd odds so the second part of this theorem states that uh, that the image here can be written explicitly in terms of p even even and the nice thing is that this image here so this can be written explicitly as 1 over 6 times this linear combination here of p even even where the coefficients are also coming from this period polynomial here but now instead of taking the odd parts we take the even parts and this is true up to some um, multiple of zk which can also be written down explicitly as we will see in the in the proof next time but um, in particular with this um, we see that this map is actually uh, well defined meaning that the image is actually an element here and yes yeah, so and this gives a really nice um, relation among these uh, period polynomials and these elements in pk even so now let's uh, give some applications of this. I mean, we have these two um, realizations. So the zeta realization we could apply now here. And the statement is that if we start with some period polynomial p, then we have the following relation um, among zeta values, namely that if we take these coefficients coming out of this period polynomial, this gives us a relation among zeta odd odd because uh, uh, if we apply the zeta realization in this equation here here we have zeta odd odd and here we have zeta of p even even but zeta of p even even is just the product of zeta even times zeta even so in other words the image of the mm, zeta realization of the space p k even this is just given by products of even Riemann zeta values. So this is just given by, or this is at least contained in, in all. Um, so this is always a rational multiple power of uh, pi. So in this case here, uh, the, we get that this is always given explicitly by this rational multiple power of pi to the k, where k is uh, the weight. And this gives these um, relations in the broader schema conjecture, stating that for each um, cusp form, so starting with the cusp form, we can write down the period polynomial, and having the period polynomial, we can write down explicitly a relation of zeta odd odd modulo lower depths, because um, these powers of pi are given by single zeta values. And we can also apply the, the Eisenstein realization and then the statement is, instead of having a rational multiple power of pi, we get a modular form. So this uh, explicit uh, linear combination of g odd odd, where these coefficients are coming from this period polynomial, gives a modular form. But this we already also saw in, in a different way last time, that, um, that there's a basis of the space of cusp forms given by these um, double combinatorial double Eisenstein series g odd odd. So this gives the, the even period polynomial part of this story here. And now we want to say how this odd period polynomial part looks like. So starting with some odd period polynomial, we want to construct uh, a realization of this um, pk even even. So, and this is the statement is the following. So the map is given as follows. So starting with an odd period polynomial. So this is a, some polynomial um, where we have an odd polynomial. And because of this shift here, uh, these coefficients here are for uh, k1 and k2 even. So this gives some rational numbers. And the homomorphism we define is given by this, where we send a pk1, k2 exactly to these coefficients. So in other words, if I start with a period polynomial, 
then this gives me rational numbers here, which satisfy the relations of this pk1, k2 in this, um, in this pk even even. So they are, they somehow give a realization of this um, subspace of dk. And next time we will see when we extend this, um, these period polynomials, that there's always a way to, to start with some element in, in the odd period polynomials where we need to ex take the extended version. And this always gives us a realization of dk in q. Or more general, if we, if we have relation, uh, if we have a polynomial where the coefficients are in some, some q vector space, such that these polynomials satisfy the relations um, which are given by the definition of this space here, then we get a realization of this formal double zeta space in this q vector space A. But this we will uh, do next time, and then we will also prove uh, this theorem here and this theorem here. And today was just an introduction to period polynomials and the connection. Um, so this picture here is, is quite nice. So the, the even part gives um, an isomorphism to the space, to the subspace of dk. And then we know that this subspace is isomorphic to the space of modular forms. And also the odd part gives us some realizations. Okay, see you next time.